So for today's topic video, we're going to be talking about integrals with logarithms and how it is that we run into them. Why can't we just do our regular integral rules? So let's take a look at this. Let's say I had the integral of x squared, just to, to start us off, see what happens. Well, the integral of x squared, you add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So that'd be x cubed over 3. Not so hard. And then plus c, of course. What about the integral of x? Same thing. Add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, plus c, of course. Well, the next one would be the integral of x to the 0. But be careful here. That's just 1. Remember? Anything raised to 0 is 1. So just an empty integral like this, remember that just comes out to be x plus c. Now here's where the problem comes. What if I did the integral of x to the negative 1? In fact, let me skip him for a minute, and let's look at the integral of x to the negative 2, just to sort of prep our brains for this a little bit. Well, add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. Negative 2 plus 1 would be negative 1. So this is negative x to the negative 1. And of course, recall that a negative exponent means that this could be written as 1 over x, where you just bring that to the bottom. So that x to the negative 2, you probably would have been given as 1 over x squared. And then you'd write it like this to do the integral. So let's look at this guy right here, x to the negative 1. And watch what happens. If I try to just do the rule that worked for all of these other numbers, then what would happen is I would have x to the negative 1 plus 1, add 1 to the power, and divide by the new power. Well, negative 1 plus 1, that's 0, which is x to the 0. And negative 1 plus 0, that's 0. So x to the 0 is 1 over, uh-oh. You can't divide by 0. So apparently, the integral of 1 over x, remember, that's what x to the negative 1 means, is 1 over 0. Ooh, That doesn't seem right, though. Seems like we should be able to get the integral for most things, right? And this doesn't seem like a particularly complicated thing to have, just 1 over x. And yet we're saying we can't even get the integral. Well, actually we can. It's just we can't use this rule. This rule fails us. Remember that what an integral is is the opposite of a derivative. So depending on the class you're taking or how you're learning this, you might be given one of these first before the other. But let's say you're just given that the derivative, which is this true, by the way, the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. <clears throat> well, the opposite of a derivative is an integral. So if I integrate both sides, well, if you've got integral of a derivative, that just cancels out and you get what's inside. Notice we said that the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So the integral of 1 over x is the opposite of the derivative of natural log. So in other words, it's natural log. Ta -da! And then plus c. Now, of course, you could be told that the integral of 1 over x is natural log. And then from there, you could get that the derivative of natural log is 1 over x. So this is the rule. The proof of this is a little bit involved. So we'll save that for another day. But as far as why do we even have this weird occurrence where the integral of 1 over x is natural log of x? Like, why does that exist? It's because just applying your general properties here, this fails with x to the negative 1 because you wind up with a division by 0, which is not allowed. So you have to do some more digging around, and you figure out that, oh, actually, this one particular case, integral of 1 over x is natural log. Now, I've been doing all of this for x greater than 0. I've been assuming that. But of course, I could plug negative numbers into 1 over x, right? So another thing that makes it complex is actually, if I integrate 1 over x, there needs to be absolute value bars here. Remember, you can't put negative numbers inside a natural log. Now, of course, <clears throat> if you start off with just natural log like this, and your x is defined to be greater than 0 anyway, that's just implied. But when you integrate, since 1 over x could have had negative numbers, 
you have to make sure to put these absolute value bars on there. So just be careful about that. But that's the idea. That's why even though we have this general rule for integration of a variable, this one case throws everything out of whack and natural logs appear, which I think is pretty cool. When you hear mathematicians talking about, you ask them like, oh, how is this useful? Why do you need such and such? And then they say, oh, it just shows up. That's what it feels like. You're studying things, you run into problems, it doesn't work, you go and you do extra work and you find these weird properties. So in summary, just be careful when you've got this one case of one over x, his integral is natural log of the absolute value of x. All right, now that you've seen why it is that logarithms show up in integration, click here if it would interest you to see an actual example using one of these types of integrals.